Okay, <laughs> let's get this microphone thing straight. <laughs> All right, hello. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, an issue that we all have with DME repairs uh, to our wheelchair. So um, this is a very different video for me, uh, but I will try to make something that's really uh, for anybody uh, it can be for a wheelchair user. It can be for someone out there that you know was very skilled. So uh, regarding repairs. And so I'm going to talk about individuals. I'm going to talk about teams. I'm going to talk about, you know, schooling, possible schooling, and uh, Medicare, signing up with, with Medicare. Because most people who use wheelchairs uh, are on Medicare and Medicaid. So how... How do you get on to that list of people who can repair a wheelchair? So um, let's start. And not having anybody out there that is uh, signed up with, with Medicare, Medicaid, uh, to help us out. And that is possible for, you know, there are people who are very skilled out there and uh, could receive some, a little bit of education and put up, set up shop and uh, start uh, helping us out. Now you can do this as an individual. Uh, you can do this as a team, you know, a group of friends uh, and, and set up shop and start helping people uh, repair their wheelchairs because sometimes the repairs are really simple, you know, and doesn't require much. It's like, you know, a footrest that got loose or, you know, a battery that needs to be changed. Um, so it's not, it's not too complicated. Uh, and there are people out there who are super skilled. I have seen them on YouTube and oh my gosh. <laughs> so they are fantastic with their hands and with repairing things. So I, I just want to, you know, due to the fact that, and I want to push this video out there because people need to know that we are in short supply of people who can fix our wheelchairs. We are across, across the, the, the spectrum. Um, we are in, in trouble. <laughs> so uh, we really need to pass laws that, uh, give us the freedom to go not only to our, our primary provider to get our wheelchair fixed, but to anyone and break that issue with the uh, warranty that if you go to somebody else, then you know you broke your warranty and then it's on you and blah, blah, blah. So we want that to, to, to be passe. I mean, my, maybe we can set up a regulation that says, um, you know, you have to go to a Medicare, Medicaid provider, but we need more providers out there because there's not, not enough. So this is my call to anyone, whether they have a disability or not, to think about setting up shop is what I'm saying. So, so what do you do next? You know, and, and you might want to practice a little bit with a couple of wheelchairs, whatever. Um, just build up that confidence and, and that one-on-one, -on -one, be able to have that one-on-one -on -one contact with people uh, with their wheelchairs and, you know, set up, you know, a comfortable space for you to repair their wheelchair, but also for them, you know, to, to sit or lie down and wait for you to, to do the repair. So, because uh, some of these repairs are just simple and not a big deal. Um, Sometimes a wheelchair has really gone through a lot <laughs> and needs some follow-up <laughs> repairs. Um, and we all know, you know, because of the lack of providers, the lack of DME repair people, that some people go without repairing their wheelchair for a long time. And then by the time, you know, it's close to getting uh, a new wheelchair that, you know, it is, is such in disrepair and that is not healthy for the person in the wheelchair, as we know, and causes a lot of stress uh, to get from point A to point B. So my call 
is to for people to consider it, consider this job because it is just an open field. Now, how do you get on? Do you want to be a private DME repair person and charge what is what is possible for someone to pay? Uh, do you want to be a person who does private pay and Medicare pay? Um, you know, uh, you got to think about that because that's just more on the business side. How do you want to do this? And if you don't want to get involved with Medicare, then, you know, if you want to do private pay, then how much, you know, would be reasonable for you to charge and make a business out of it, uh, but also to really, really help people uh, who have wheelchairs in need of repairs. And again, I'm telling you, some of these repairs are pretty simple, and um, it just takes five, 10 minutes, and, and they're done. So this is like on the business side that you really need to think about how how you want to develop this and, and touch base with someone who knows about business and setting up shop and all that kind of stuff to kind of get your juices going and, and figure out as an individual how do you want to do this. And if you start to get overwhelmed, <laughs> you, you, you might. And in, in the first six months, you might start getting overwhelmed of the clients you have. Uh, then you want to uh, start building a team, start building with people who you can trust, who are good workers, who can uh, be those who can, um, someone who can do the, the, the front business per se, and be the person who uh, is uh, the contact, the first person in contact, and then help set up things, and who they go to for repairs. Is it you, is it somebody more, more um, skilled in your shop? Is it someone uh, more on the lines of they just need their footrest, you know, screwed back on or their headrest repaired or, you know, screwed back on or they need a new bar for whatever. So, or they need a new wheel just put on. So, you know, it's it, different levels of care is what I'm talking about basically here. So, so it's, it's the, you know, you got to look at the business side and then you got to look at how you want to organize the, the different types of repairs. In the beginning, it just might be you. It just might be you. And, you know, you, you do okay. You got to figure out your time. How, does, how long does it take you to fix this or how long does it take you to fix that? Uh, can you find someone who would support your business in the beginning and can you get, you know, a donation for to start a new business? Uh, can you find a grant? That's what I'm talking about. Can you find a grant to be able to start this type of business and to start it because there's a huge lack of, of these types of providers for us? So that is my invitation, whether it's individual or whether it's a team. Um, the next thing is if you want to get some training, you know, at a technical college or look around to see where there could be uh, someone who could train you uh, at a school that might be able to train you on, on wheelchairs, types of wheelchairs, the software, the hardware, you know, that kind of thing. And that might really excite you. You might be able to get a grant for that and not have to pay anything for your education uh, due to the huge need, due to your needs. Uh, so you might be able to find, you know, uh, support as a student to, to be able to do that. Uh, so that would be huge if you want to go to school for a semester or two. It shouldn't take too long uh, to get some education, get a certification in that. Um, the next big thing, and that's the business side, would be to apply for Medicare and as a provider. And um, I have a sheet here, and I'll leave the link so you can look at it. Basically, filling out paperwork for Medicare is not too scary. Um, I filled it out years ago when, when I was a psychotherapist. Um, it's kind of like filling out a resume. <laughs> it's kind of like filling out a resume. 
you know, you state how long you've been in the business, and um, you you state, you know, your certification, you state, you know, your experience. Um, so that kind of thing needs to be filled out with Medicare. You also have to apply apply with something that's called an NPI, which is a national. That's the first thing you need to do as you're becoming a provider. And the first step is to apply for that NPI number. So it identifies you, um, that number identifies you as a DME, DME uh, repair person. So um, NPI, National Provider, um, let me see if I can find the, the National Provider Identifier. So that's the first thing, that's the first step you need to do and that paperwork is, is easy. I think you can do it online and, and you're done with that. And then you complete the Medicare enrollment application, which is a little long because it's again, it's kind of like a resume. And you know, so they want to know about you, they want to know about your experience, they want to know about um, you know, chain and ownership system, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that that would be good for you to to read, to read about that. Um, and I have a sheet here, Medicare enrollment for durable medical equipment, prosthetics, orthotics, and suppliers. So that's a, a group that they have and uh, where you apply. So the, there's, it's just two pages. You read about it and, and to understand uh, what are the steps. And you need to be very patient <laughs> on the business side uh, filling out for Medicare or Medicaid. Well, once you fill out the paperwork and you're approved with Medicare as a provider, um, then it's automatic that you can also serve people with Medicaid. Um, so um, so that's really important. They might have you fill out an extra page for Medicaid, but otherwise uh, Medicare and Medicaid are kind of connected. So, so that, that's, that's my call, you know. Um, so you have to think about your passion uh, because I, tr I truly think that you need a passion for uh, this field of repairing wheelchairs. It's not just you and the relationship with the wheelchair. It's you and the relationship of the person who uses that wheelchair. So if you get my drift, this is kind of like a social, uh, a social connection that is important for you to have with your client. So... Um, and if you're not great at that, that's okay. You find a person who's really a, a good uh, a front line person who can establish that relationship with that client, uh, and, and that's really important. And you might be the, 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 the back, backstage person who uh, looks at the wheelchair and, and does the, the fixing and fixing with possible recommendations. Uh, you want to look at the type of paperwork you want to use. Uh, the, there will be some uh, paperwork for Medicare when you bill them. So you have to have some codes and you uh, put on the paperwork, you know, this is the code that corresponds to fixing XYZ on the wheelchair. And they will pay you. It won't be much. So uh, there might be a little co-payment that the client has to pay, um, but, you know, and then you might have those that just want to get something fixed really quick uh, because they're going to travel or because, you know, it's a crisis of some kind, and so you might want to do it, you know, uh, on the side and, and charge them as private, you know, private pay. Now, there is a flip side to this invitation, and that is the legal side. <laughs> because, let's say, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you get a per mobile wheelchair, and it's a great wheelchair, everything else. You sign some papers with the company that got you the wheelchair, and they say, we are the only ones you can bring our wheel your wheelchair to us for repairs and services. That is a big problem. And they say on top of that, that if you go somewhere else, you break your warranty. So that is a big problem because 
even though these other companies mean well, um, is problematic because they don't have enough staff to service all of their clients. A huge problem. So that's what we're talking about, that someone gets you a wheelchair in, in within the medical system, and then they have you sign all these paperwork, and then they say, and you break your warranty if you don't come back to us, only us, to get repairs. And then when you need a repair, you go back to them, you, you call them, you try to make an appointment, and it takes a long time to just get a hold of them, and then it takes months for them to give you an appointment. So that is the core of the problem. And I think that Permobile, I think that uh, Pride Mobility, I think that Key Mobility, you know, all these companies need to realize what we're going through and shift, shift the, the situation and allow us to go to other providers. If my provider can't service my wheelchair, that I have permission to go to somewhere else. That I have permission to go here or there or over there. Folks, that is a huge problem. So that is what we're trying to break through. Um, so you would perhaps when you're setting up or considering setting up the shop, you might have to call Promobile and ask them, you know, how does this work? You know, if you wanted to set up shop in XYZ state, because every state is a little different. Um, some of them have arranged and given permission for the owners now to fix their own wheelchairs or to go somewhere else because of you. In other states, the, the regulations that if you try to fix your own wheelchair, then you've broken the warranty. <laughs> it's like totally ridiculous. So, um, so we, we really need to establish that conversation more and more in all the states and all parts of the world so that we have the freedom to go to other providers to get our wheelchair fixed. And um, regardless of the warranty, and maybe, you know, I don't know what the new regulations could be. Uh, perhaps it's someone who has XYZ paperwork and is certified or has permission from Permobile uh, to be a provider, you know, to repair their wheelchairs. Or that uh, Pride Mobility says, yes, we will, uh, we will establish you as uh, a provider. We like you. You know, you you seem good. You have it together. <laughs> so yes, we will tell Medicare that you know, you can be a provider, and you can see our wheelchairs. So so then we have to break down that tradition of that company. XYZ company saying you can only come to us because otherwise you break your warranty and that's it. You know, that's on you. So so that's that's the legal battle that we face. So even though I'm sending out this invitation, example, in the state of Wisconsin, we have that problem. We can only go to one provider for repairs and it takes months and months and months and months because they don't have enough employees to attend to our needs because they don't have enough people answering the phone. <laughs> you know, they make it so complicated. So folks, join me in this battle that we can figure this out soon so that we can have other providers available. That if my provider is not available to fix my wheelchair, that I can go to someone else who is approved. So that's something to think about, something to bring to your county, something to bring to your state so we can turn this around. Because it's, it's a state level. Unless the federal, the federal government gets involved, uh, we are stuck battling at the state level. So, um, so this is also something to put out there. So before you set up your shop, we, we got to fix, if you got to check in your state, if that's going on, that only one provider uh, can attend these types of, of clients, then 
then that's the state where you need to battle the rights. You have to go at the, at the sta state level to break that up and say, no, this is, this is unjust because that company, it takes about six months to get into to make a repair, to do a repair on wheelchairs, on their clients. So we want to establish the rule that clients who get promobile wheelchairs can go to this provider, or there are several providers available where they can go and get their wheelchairs repaired without breaking the warranty. All right, something to think about, something to talk about, something to organize, and uh, talk to your state. It shouldn't be too complicated if you have someone who can help you with the business side, which sometimes it can be a little scary, uh, but if you are uh, an organized person, if you can find that partner who can help you with the business side, someone who's, um, you know, honorable <laughs> uh, and assist you with building the business side and then building the mechanical side of uh, fixing and caring for, for wheelchairs. And I'm making this call because it's urgent. We need more people like this, like that, because the market is wide open. We have a scarcity of, of people. And sometimes to work in an organization is hard. And sometimes you might be better as your own person, your own small little company. Uh, that's what you do, you repair um, you repair wheelchairs. And uh, so, and the more we put pressure on Medicare to understand how difficult it is right now for us to get repairs on our wheelchairs, um, the, the more the Medicare can understand what's going on in the market, I think the more they'll be open to having more providers. So, in, in each state, you know, this is not just Wisconsin. This is for nationwide that I'm making this call for people to specialize in wheelchair repair uh, because we need you. Uh, we're in desperate need for people who can repair our wheelchairs. And the companies out there who are um, the, the go-to right now are overwhelmed and, and don't have enough workers to be able to do all these repairs and sometimes because people shy away from organizations that have that tight structure and it's it's really hard they want you to be there at certain times and to wear a uniform all that kind of stuff and some people are are not that type you know uh they don't fit in an organization so so that that's a big issue so we really want to, if you, if you don't want to be part of an organization, in an organization that's going to crack the whip at you all the time and you just can't deal with that pressure, then consider um, doing it on your own. And then, you know, have someone to help you with the business side and then for you to figure out the shop and how you want to set it up and a frontline person to do that social, that interaction, that, that friendship type uh, relational uh, piece that is really important to establish with that client so they come back to you over and over again. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the business side. <laughs> so that is my call. Um, I would love for people to uh, share this video because this is one of those videos that needs to be shared far and wide um, and see if we can snag some people to start thinking about that and to offer their services as an individual or a very small team. And I think if we have, you know, more people that are out there offering their services um, and do away with this problem of the warranties, uh, we'll, we'll be okay. <laughs> will be better because it, right now it takes us months to get a simple repair. Months. So, and, and that's, that's insane. Insane. I've been trying for the last three to four months to get my battery changed in my power wheelchair. I have not been able to do it. So, <laughs> today I have to touch base yet again and see if, uh, 
we can get this done. Someone's calling me. Oh, same department. <laughs> so, uh, so that is my call for you to think about it, for you to um, to consider it. Um, see if there are any grants out there, business grants that you can apply for that will help you start the business. Um, the Medicare stuff, don't worry about that. That's just filling out your name, your phone number, your experience, your certification, whatever you might have. So, um, and help us, please, please, please help us uh, to, to get these repairs for our wheelchairs completed. Uh, so that is my call. I'm hoping that you will heed our call and see if this works out. If you all also can put pressure on the organizations to do away with these warranties and for you to be free and available to repair our, our wheelchairs. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us. Uh, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me and listening to me babble <laughs> about the need for us to get our wheelchairs repaired and reduce the time to a week to a few days, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, the other thing is don't forget about the Olympics. They're starting on August 28th, so I will leave the link for that if you're interested in looking at some clips, or hopefully they'll, they'll televise it as well so we can see some, uh, some of these heroes of ours. And um, so please come back if you want to help my channel. Please, uh, if you want to... Uh, do a thumbs up if you want to subscribe. It's completely free. And uh, share this video far and wide. And hopefully we'll make a breakthrough in the market to help us out. <laughs> All right, people. Take care. And I hope to see you in the next video.